Pwede lang tuloy ni Mineski. Pero of course, yun, ang sa Mineski naman, hindi, hindi sila gagawa ng anything para ikakatalo nila eh. Kasi knowing na yung composure, nila, yung composure nila, yung versatility nila as a team, of course, parang, parang nagsasayaw lang sila eh. Everything is synchronized for them. Ang problema naman dito sa Rec Esports, which is yung nangyari ng first game, eh, nawala talaga yung connection nila. Yung parang, of course, yung synchronization nila as a team, nawala talaga. So, mahihirapan yata sila mag-adjust ngayon knowing na isa sa, isa sa top maps ng Mineski is ang Nuke. Exactly. And especially considering the fact na si Dubstep medyo sumabog siya last game na masasabi kong... Sabog in a good way. Sabog in a good way. Okay. Uh, siya yung MVP <laughs> yeah. of the game. 20 plus frags. Dude, isipin mo naman, HLTV nandun siya. Gilid. Gilid, di ba? Player of the week. Dubstep. Dubstep. Grabe. Bihira mangyari yun. Oo. Oh, oh. Medyo maputi si Dubstep dun sa, ano di ba? So, baka nang tingin sa'yo. O tapos? Well, anyway, uh, Mineski, wala sila kailang gawin eh. Ang kailangan hmm. may gawin dito, mag-step up. Rek. Alam nilang mapa ng Mineski to. Um, hello? Uh, alam nilang mapa ng Mineski to. Yeah. So, ang kailang gawin ng Rek dito ay uh, compose sila sarili nila kahit na na-run down sila first map. And then, again, yung sinabi ko, huwag sila matatakot. Nasa grand final sila. Yeah. And then, pag nasa grand final sila, dami mo nang tinalo, dami nang pinagdaanan. Pagdating dito, matatakot ka pa. Ituloy-tuloy mo na. Ituloy-tuloy mo na. Kung matalo man kayo, palaban. Oo, oh, palaban. Wag yung Hashtag wag, palaban. Wala, wag yung tirang takot. Right, Kasi so, napansin ko, lahat ng mga engagement nila, parang tirang takot eh. So, hmm. Yun, bring their A-game, so good luck sa kanila. Alright, so game tayo guys. So, map 2, it's Nuke. And of course, there's shoutcasts for today. No man, of course, asks you right. And here we go. <laughs> and we are on the second map of the day. Rec Esports versus Mineski on Nuke. Potentially the last game for Mineski, but Rec Esports, they can still turn things around. Rec Esports, of course, starting on the CE side and Mineski on the T side. So it's something that it's something that we actually are excited to look into because Nuke is not a common map pool for yeah. most of these teams and this is the first time in the tournament in the semifinals and the finals that Nuke was chosen. And while that's happening, a bunch of engagements actually happening here. It's quickly down to the 2v4 situation and Rec Esports is quickly down into the corner. And it's gonna be a defense that Rec Esports might not be able to finalize as Oracle D. He gets the one, he gets the second. Good two consecutive headshots, and he has to go for more. This is still a 2v1. The bomb has been planted, but it actually isn't planted on his own side of the silo, so he's gotta go ring around the Rosie, but he gets caught out. At least that Glock in an accuracy is giving him a little bit of leeway here, but can he really go for it? He is down to at least three bullets, and it's not gonna be enough. Mineski, take in our first pistol round. Actually, good showing for Rec Esports. At least this time around, they are showing a bit of a fight. I think a yeah. couple of talks backstage finally brought out the game in them. But this is still something that Rec Esports will need to take into consideration. This is Mineski's map. This yeah. is something that they are known for. I kind of feel like at the start of this, Mineski, or rather if if they actually played Toyn Cost, but before that, yeah, let's just see if Mineski can finish this round real quick. And G take, getting a double kill there, taking a triple kill, taking down Moja, Uyop, and Packing. It's just Wits and Uncle D on their own. Mm -hmm. And Uncle D taking down Retrack, down to a 2v4 situation. It's still a tall order for Rec Esports to defend against the Mineski push, but it's still something that is doable. All those orders as orders can come. It's only, well, the uncle, Uncle D, Drew Monster. Former Drew, formerly known as Drew Monster, to be able to make something happen. Ooh, dubstep, he almost misses the rotation. But as I was saying, I felt like it it might be better for Rec Esports to actually have started on uh, on the T side, because at least once you get you know once because before in the before in the Nuke change, Nuke was a legit CT sided map. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't slightly city-sided, it was a city-sided map. And with the changes, they said that, oh, it feels a bit more balanced, but no. When players actually got a bit more accustomed to the map, they said it's still freaking city-sided and feel like if Rec Esports were on the opposite side of the spectrum, where they're starting T-side, they might be able to close out the second half better. But of course, that's only a 
That's only a prediction for me, but we'll just see if that is uh, gonna be the case or gonna be true. Yeah, you can say that it's uh, still uh, pretty much the CT side map, but because of the extra cargo containers that were laid out outside of site, it's something that it's something that is. It balances the map. It balances out yeah. the map. There you go. Thank you. True for, that. For so that. only packing will be left here for Rec Esports. He's gonna be. At least hell bent to maybe try to get the clutch or even just steal some of the weapons of Mineski because you know how, again, quickly a T side can snowball, get their items, get their AKs, and packing. He, can, he, he is going to be happy if he's going to be able to at least take a rifle away from Mineski. That's going to be, uh, I think, the name of the game for him right here, but he might get caught out. He looks for the second. Can he go for it? No. The wall's too much, and the penetration from that AK will be enough for Dispenser to kill him even through the blockage of that corner. That's the, that's the good thing about starting out on the T side. You'll be able to quickly go to your AKs, your Galils, because they are relatively cheaper compared to the CT side weapons, wherein uh, the AK-47 is $2,700, and the M4 whatever variant is around 3300 so that's a huge difference. You can all, with the AK-47, you can get yourself a single... One-tap headshot. Uh, is that what you're talking about? One tap headshot. You yeah. can also add utilities there. And dubstep getting the kill onto Uyop quickly down to a 4v4 situation as Uncle D takes down Dispenser with a now Geek. And it's now down to a 2v2 situation as Captain Hannibal goes in for the refrag. It's just Moja on his own 1v2. But there is still plenty of time for Mineski to work with here. Man, that rotation coming out from Mineski was insane. You saw that just came out from the skies like a hawk and just shot them all down. Now, this is a 1v1, like you said, and Captain Hannibal, he's got to try to figure out where Moja is, but at the same time, he's got to at least plant the bomb early so that he can uh, maybe find himself a good position to just defend, or, you know what, 50 seconds left into the clock. He has a lot of uh, leeway to work with for now, so, Nomad, this is a game of cat and mouse. This is a game of cat and mouse indeed. And concerning the fact that Nuke has a lot of verticality on it, it's, you have a lot of things to take into consideration. Is he on the upper floor? Is he on the lower side? Where, where is he going to come from? There are a lot of emphasis here, a lot of passageways for both teams to take advantage of. And this is starting to look like an intense cat and mouse game. And that flash is not going to do anything. Captain Hannibal will be able to spot that out. Clean from Hannibal. The that prediction was easy to have spotted, but look at this. Hannibal coming in from up top and just ripping through three members of Rec Esports and clutching it. That setup on bombsite A, I mean, there was, what, 45 seconds, 40 seconds before the bomb explodes, right? And Mojo went for the, on, the only entrance that was very easily countered, even though you try to pop flash your way out of there. So it's not really going to happen, sad to say. Uh, Annabelle had the, the better, I guess, read on what was gonna be the play of Mojo right there, but oh, Wits, he is hearing all of them right now. And Dubstep taking down Wits. 5v4, a minute 20 seconds left on the clock. Mineski, they will be able to play, play the clock around, but Uyop takes down Dubstep. One of their main offers is down, so this is something that Mineski needs to look out for. And it's got to be frustrating seeing... Uh, oh, Hannibal, though. <laughs> we'll actually get caught up by packing, but that was just a little bit of a sneak, a sneaky play that's not really going to matter too much as there was too many members of Mineski already onto the side. And here is... Ooh, yeah, he goes in, but still doesn't get the kill. Gladly, though, that Recheck will be actually one tap away from dying, but... It's still Bomb Planet down. It's still Uyop in a 1v2. But can he go for the clutch? That is the question. Make or break will be the time here because you can see right now, four for nothing, four for nil. Rec Esports have still got to get around. And it seems like Uyop will forfeit this one. And it seems that we're going to have um, uh, a tactical pause as this round will be taken by Mineski. And at least they are making use of the tactical pauses that they have. They need to talk about... Talk about their selves and talk about the teams as well. Talk, I mean, talk about Mineski because Mineski has been flawless almost into yeah. this game. That previous round play, that initial one, wherein they got, they got the smokes, as a, as a CD side, you have to be very frustrated when you're gonna see just a wall of smoke and then you can't, you can hear them, but you can't like figure out where to shoot or get the damage that you need to do. So, I mean, it was a, it was a, 
good initiate for Mineski, and then <laughs> Wits was like, oh, Dubstep is on, a, on top of the cargo, and he has his up right set where he was, Shot, shoots him down, and then Rek Esports, no, Mineski is pushing for outside. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just, I mean, if you, if you had a, a SMG there, you can quickly spray down anybody walk, running through that smoke. Yeah, I guess so, but of course, I mean, even if you have godlike aim, if it's through the smoke, you can only hope at times. You can only hope. And it's only a miracle that can save them from that. Yeah. So far, Rec Esports uh, feels like... This is... This, uh, just a little, uh, little bit of a clarification. This, is, this nuke map was picked by Mineski. Or Rec. Rec. Okay. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, because uh, on mine it says that it, it's Rec, but it feels like Mineski knows this map because before if i'm not again if i'm not mistaken mpgl that was when around that time was mpgl 8 was the time where nuke actually changed right they yeah. um they did the refresh on the nuke map and that was the time where in mineski was the i think the only team who know who knew how to actually play the map who practiced on how to play it yeah they were confident playing yeah. nuke during that time and it's actually still showing now because nuke is not a common map for the philippine teams and as i'm saying yeah, exactly. that wits taking down hannibal and retract oh, and then we'll go no. look for the frag but he gets very very low down to a 4v3 situation well wits tried to mario down his way to victory but of course that's not going to happen for the meantime uyop will survive but they know where he is well, Dubstep just drops down, rather Dispenser drops down from behind and shoots him down. And, well, Nomad, this is looking to be a very convincing uh, second map for Mineski. It's, it is starting to look like that, but, you know, there is still some fight left, left into Rec Esports. If their strats don't work, they, at least they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mineski in terms of the aim duels, something that... Mm -hmm. A lot of teams would also try to stray away from because you're in this high level of competition. All teams are expected to be good aimers. So it's really all about the mind games, all about knowing the right strat to execute and to execute them properly. Yeah, but the thing is, once you know how to take control of outside nuke, it just makes it so easy to actually either push in onto B site. But before that, Hannibal will not win the duel against Packing, but Immediately, this is what I like about Mineski. They immediately go for the refrags, the punishes that they're gonna be looking for. Dubstep that will get caught out. So Mineski uh, was a little bit red by Rec Esports. Good for Rec there to actually get their first round. But uh, I guess analyzing a little bit that round, Mineski, they didn't use the smokes that they tried. That they did the setup on the previous round to like just rush in through the outside, going to B site, and then uh, Rec they kind of. Uh, rather, Mineski slowed down a little bit. Rec were able to answer, Rec rather respond. And then it was just, you know, Mineski not knowing where Rec were actually positioned at. And the, that misinformation, that, or the lack of information, got them to win. Yeah, and well, that's happening. Retract, taking down packing for V5. And yeah, it's all about the mental games here at this point. If you can outplay your opponents, you will immediately have the upper hand. No matter how good of an aimer you are, if you're going to get faked by the smokes or the flashes being said by the teams, you are going to lose. And lose indeed you will. Moja, of course, is going to come from up top. Oh, that was actually kind of dirty, but Tubstep finds Moja right there. That would have been a good catch-off play coming in from Rec Esports, but they know where Wits is, and Wits won't be able to escape. That is going to be bad. He went in for the AWP. He wanted to go for the save. Almost going to happen. Almost happened for him, but... Well, not enough. Man, that... That, that one round win for Rec Esports actually is biting him right now rather than just going for straight losses. So they got the blue shell effect. Now they got hard reset by Mineski. And that hard reset is going to cost them at least a couple of rounds depending on how they are going to play this out. So they get, they, there's still a chance for Rec Esports to catch up. They just need to make sure that all their shots are going to count. Because so far, their strategies are not connecting. And as that's happening, a couple of engagements there, losing packing. Dubstep and Dispenser as Moja take, gets taken, takes Dispenser out. Wow. But it's now down to a 3v3 and a refrag immediately coming from Retrack. And another frag coming in from Uyop, taking down Gi. That's a 3v2 situation, putting Mineski in a tight spot. Much power to just a standard, okay, suppressive fire while one guy pushes. Look at how much impact, it, the impact it does for Mineski. But of course, 
Still with those plays, it's gonna be a 1v2. Uyop is the one who survives, rather, Uyop or Wits. But, I mean, they got a lot of clutches on the previous round, but now they have to go to the next level and try to clutch even better on a map that I feel like, even though they picked it, it's not... It feels like they're being pushed out of their comfort zone. Yeah, because I think... I'm not sure about the reasoning why they picked out Nuke, but I'm pretty sure they have, any, they have strategies in mind here. Well, we might be able to see that as soon as they switch sides, but Mineski, as well, they have premium strategies. Not really strategy strategies, but they're able to go into the side and just keep taking, just keep finding heads and just... Yeah, mow and, down and it just town. shows, like, you can see how Mineski have been playing, or rather, you can just see how Mineski as a team, they've been playing with, I guess, pro, pro mindset in, mind, in, in their heads, because it feels like they're, they're trying to go for strategies that work amazing on team play rather than just going for the solo plays. Yeah, and team play is a, is a huge thing. Yeah, CSGO is a game about teamwork. You can't, well, exactly. you, you, you can still win on your own, but there is going to be a huge chance for you to win if you play as a team. Don't, I mean, one of the common strategies that most of the Filipino teams have is they're going to center around a single player and just work around what that player's capability is. And the teams that are here in the playoffs, that were in the playoffs, they are playing together as a team. They know the, each strengths, they know each weaknesses, and it's all just about working as a team and try to find out what's the best course of action. And what is the best course of action here for Rec Esports? I mean, they've tried to go for uh, the standard defensive plays, but again, like I said, it might be better off for them if they just have actually started on the T side rather than the CT. Because on the T side, at, like it, you know, like if you lose all of these rounds on T side, and again, Nuke being, a, I would say again, a, a CT sided map. Once you go for that CT side, and the and the team actually knows how to play it, you're not, you're gonna even be harder pressed to actually win a round. Yeah, because the T's are just going to go at you. They have no choice but to go to where yeah. you are. So yeah. it's all about holding the right angles. Holding off on those right angles and hoping that you get the kills to stop any of the strats plays by Mineski. Moja, a little bit sneaky beaky like this guy has been pretty creative where he tries to approach Mineski. But like I said, solo plays will not make it through for our T CT side team. Can they really go for it? Dubstep, he went in for a wall bang, hoping to get a shot off. <laughs> Imagine if, if it looked like a VAC shot, that would have been... Back man. Yeah. Well, I mean, Dubstep doesn't do that, yeah. but if he, he does, the, the, you know, the... The, the, oh, the Twitch chat's going to go back. The back chat. Back, back, back. <laughs> but nonetheless, 53 seconds left on the clock, and Mineski are slowly pushing themselves in. Oh, I like this coming in from Rec. They're trying to catch off Mineski's timing and it's working wonders for them. They're, I don't know if they were able to steal weapons, but it seems like they weren't able to. But that was a good uh, setup for them. With 30 seconds left into the clock, Mineski have to push. And this, is, this setup is actually going to pay dividends for them if they are able to deny any plans coming in from Mineski. And considering the fact that they have 22 seconds left on the clock, Direct Esports, they still have enough time, just enough for them to go into position. But as I'm saying that, the bomb will get planted and the pressure is now off for Direct Esports to go ahead and go for the retake. Oh. That's going to be a little bit of a ring around the rosy. There's a couple of smokes here on the B site. I don't know if any of these players will be spotting it out. It's going to be the duel. Uyop actually gets it. So here we go. Captain Hannibal, he's done it before. Can he do it again? There's the one. There's the second, but it's not going to be enough. He doesn't get actually anybody. So the defuse will be had by Rec Esports, and they get themselves that second round. And Rec Esports is slowly getting into their rhythm. They finally found their groove. They find out, they've already found out what type of strategy that they need to go for on the CT side. They have five more rounds to go for before they actually yeah. have a comfortable foothold and that, going to the second half. That round could have been a whiff round. Like, they got uh, some really good offset or, or off-timing off plays. But now, we're going to be going for both gun rounds. And we've seen Mineski do it once. 
that they reset Rec Esports. Rec Esports, again, this is the round that they have to prove themselves. They gotta win this one, or else they will not have any money to work with on the second round. So that's gonna, or on the following round. So that could be, again, another two, three rounds easy for Mineski. So it's really gonna be, again, I mean, it does sound like I'm, I'm a little bit biased, but it's not really, it's, it's just like Rec Esports, they're the team who has to really uh, show up. Yeah, just like what Shane said, retract, taking down Mojda. Bumps the thing out, Wits there, 5v3 situation, the pressure is on for Rekt Esports. See, this round is something that they need to win, just like you said. And it's just a matter of time before they actually oh no. decide to go in for it. And Guy taking down Uncle D there, that's going to be one less man to worry about. And Uyop on his own against the five-man Mineski squad. I think Packing shouldn't have actually tried to smoke that Molotov out because you gave your position already, because yeah. at least that Molotov meant that, okay, the left, the right side of the tunnel would be covered, but smoking it would have actually meant that Mineski knows now that there's w at least one person who actually defused the, the flames, but now it's gonna be Uyab to try to keep his AWP. We're not gonna be seeing it, and oh no, they take it off of his hands, and Rec Esports do not have a SR sniper rifle. Yes, I understand that no, these are terminology. I, I'm, just say, I'm just saying it because there might be other viewers who don't know what SR means. That's why we call it the AWP because that is what it's called, <laughs> SRI. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah. Proper I'm name. just going to call it AWP then. My bad, my bad. But not, yeah. Not the Zuma Banger. Oh, Dumpset with a dirty headshot onto Moja. Yeah. Now quickly down to a 5v4 situation. Mineski leading by seven rounds and it's not looking good for Rec Esports at all. Rec Esports got re reset. It's not, like you said, it's gonna be too good for them as they get wiped out and Mineski get a clean, clean, K, a clean ace. It, it is going to be a clean ace. Just four more rounds before the end of the half. Two more, yeah, wait. Yeah, use, use, the, use the math skills. There's a reason why I'm a caster. <laughs> Again, there is no direct color correlation between being a caster and being bad at math. <laughs> Although it, it, it does happen for some, for some unfathomable reason, it does. The pressure is here, man. Come on. But nonetheless, ca Captain Hannibal and Dubstep and Dispenser quickly cleaning up house, taking down three men from Rack Esports. It's just Uyop and packing on their own once again. And Uyop coming in from behind, taking down Dubstep, gets. A weapon and denies the plan onto Captain Hannibal down to a 2v3 situation. And Mineski, they are going in. They have a bit of time left to work here. They know where Uyop is. He's got to go for the reload. He's being chased down right now. But can he win that duel as the aim punch will be true for, uh, for him? And that's not going to be happening for you. Still, great backstab for Uyop. If only. Mineski would have been a bit more in range of his shots, the remaining members rather. That might have been a clutch, but, well, it's not going to push through. Well, the Rec Esports are showing, I would say, glimmers of hope, but a glimmer cannot flash or blind Mineski's rampage through this game. Yeah, because for them to flash out Mineski, they need, to, they need flashbacks. <clears throat> Okay, moving on. It's my oh, turn yeah, to say it. It's my turn to say it. No, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, they need to make use of their utilities more. Yeah, I, I get it, though. I get it, I get it. Yeah, that it's, is true. That is true. Ooh. And <laughs> <laughs> he actually shot below, and then when he saw his real opponent, just flicked up. Crazy uh, reaction times from Hannibal. Yeah, and it is 2v3. A minute, eight seconds left on the clock. Still a lot of time to work with here. And it's now a 1v2 situation with Whip on his own, almost taking down Dubset, but it's not going to happen. That was... And this is going to be a solid lead for Mineski going into the second half. Man, you don't want to go into the second half with a 2-13 scoreline. 3-12, of course, it's still not good, but it, at least there's a possibility of being able to do that. And yeah, I can hear there's a lot of people in the crowd going a little bit wild. I feel I know who has come into here, uh, into the venue, guys. Indeed, and of course, Moja taking down this Pencer. 
5v4 situation. Mines, they're actually a good frags coming in from Moja. Getting two kills, but Dubstep and Retract quickly evens out the odds. It's just Uyop and Wits on their own in a 2v3 situation. And only Uyop will remain. Can he go for the clutch? That's going to be the question here. There has been already damage onto Captain Hannibal. <laughs> yes, here he is, guys. The one, the only, G Loco. Or sorry. Ay, si Kong ba? Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, but back to the game. Uyop still right here. Trying to go for the clutch. Not going to happen. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Captain Hannibal is going to take it out. Oh, man. Oh, he's there. He is there. That, that's Kong, right? Damn. Welcome to the building, Kong. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, let's go back to the game. It's not looking good for Mineski, and it's something that is going to be a huge factor for Rec Esports. It's a large, la it's a huge ladder that they need to climb. Rec Esports, they have the capabilities, they have the win conditions, they know how to aim duel. It's all just a matter of, it's all just a matter of making use of the skills that they have. That's true, but for now, we haven't really seen too much setups, but this is going to be the, the second half of the game, wherein you have to, like on the T side, you have to go for setups, and I feel like Rec Esports might not be prepared for that, but I could be wrong. I mean, they were the ones who actually picked this 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 map, so maybe they can. Yeah, you can hear the crowd there shouting, Asus. Of course, thank you so much to Asus, Republic of Gamers, for letting this happen, making this happen. And Kong, welcome to the building. And of course, they, these this is the grand finals of the ROG Masters Philippine qualifiers, and Mineski are looking good. This might be their second title in a row for them. And as you can see there, Kong, hands, shaking hands with the people. Man. What's up, Kong? Number one, indeed. Power. Oh, power. <laughs> second half is you, now starting. You know who needs power, man? What? Rec Esports. Indeed. That's what Rec Esports need. Then that's something that, you know, a lot of people would actually look for. Oh, look Captain Hannibal, gonna go for the FPJ. The FPJ. Yes. That is what they Whoa, call the Whoa, packing, up. getting a quick kill onto retract. Quickly down to a 4v3 situation. Make it out a 3v3 situation. Dubstep taking down Wits, and it's a minute 20 seconds left on the clock, and Uyop taking down Hannibal with that dirty headshot. Moja taking down Dubstep as well, and it's just Dispenser on his own in a 3v1 situation, and Dispenser has the capability to clutch this. Rec Esports, they are in a good position right now. They are in a good position indeed as the Spencer looking for one. He spots it. Great headshot, but it's going to be Moja to actually just be lurking behind the wall or behind the corner and spot him out. So I actually talked about how, again, it's going to be the need for a setup here for, for Rec Esports, but I forgot. Again, it's going to be the second half of, of the round. So you start pistols. And Mineski, they've shown that they are vulnerable on that pistol round. So once a team can actually get that, they're at least possibly secured two to three rounds yeah. of, you know, at least winning. So we'll just see here as Rec Esports will try to do their best to wrap up Mineski for these following two to three rounds. And Wits actually getting a double kill there is quickly down to a 3v2 situation. And this is going to start the spree that, that Rec Esports need. They finally have the two rounds in, not stuck into the two rounds that they were in earlier. So this is something that's, this might be a good light for them, you know? Good light. You never know. Maybe the, the insane cheers of the crowd are, <laughs> are reaching Mineski and they're like, we can't think. I'm, I'm, I'm just like blue balling that possibility. Well, you know. It, it does happen. We are on a live event. Anything can happen anything in a live event. Anything can happen indeed. <laughs> and a minute 40 seconds left on the clock and Rekki Sports they are showing a good stride here in the second half, but they just need to be consistent. Mineski, on the other hand, they are showing a bit of a fight. And Uncle D taking down Gi there. And he actually takes down Retrack as well. It's quickly down to a 5v2 situation. And it's just a matter of time before Rec Esports cleans up house. Good pacing coming in from Rec Esports. It's going to be this shot, headshot from the, onto Dubstep. And here we have only Dispenser to remain. Can he really go for it? The bomb is planted. Rec Esports, no right. Mineski don't have any items whatsoever. Just maybe the upgraded pistols. 
no utility as well. And Dispenser, he's left in a 1v5. And will this lone clutcher for Mineski be able to, at the least, take off some guns, you know, uh, lower the economy standpoint of Rec Esports, but I don't think it's gonna be the case, though I could be wrong. I mean, you could be wrong, that is a possibility. But, you know, Dispenser, he, he's, no, he's a known clutcher, just like what I said earlier. But it's all, it's all about just having the right weapon at the right time as well. You can't, it's a tall order to clutch with pistols, but it's going to be easier to clutch if you had uh, rifles. But nonetheless, Rec Esports, they have a good stand here going to the second half, preventing Mineski to go into the match point. Do you think... Uh, they need to keep doing what they're doing, or do they need to uh, change up their strategies? Maybe change up their strategies a little bit here. Um, actually, rather, this is going to be the first round where Mineski actually have weapons, so there's no mix-up just yet. They have to figure out how Mineski will be approaching the, the first true CT, their, their first true CT side. So Rec Esports, they got a little bit caught out there. Uyop did not expect that there was going to be someone at the edge of the smoke. But Rec Esports are trying to be a bit surgical here, but Dubstep goes in with the pop flash, actually swims in the fire. It's actually pretty risky, but it and actually pays off for him. That was but a one it, for one. It's quickly down to a 2v3 situation. 2v3, as you say, there's going to be no bomb plant just yet for Rec Esports as they're trying to at least find a site that isn't swarming with Mineski, uh, the Mineski roster. They spot the one. Packing will be taken down. There is uh, the bomb being dropped as well. And that's just going to be Mineski with a 2v1 situation, or rather 3v2 situation. And they wipe out Rec Esports. And Mineski is inching closer and closer to match point as, you know, this is going to be their second title unless Rec Esports finds an answer to the question that's, that Mineski is asking. Ano ang sagot sa tanong? We will find out. Exactly. <laughs> but nonetheless, Wits taking down Dubstep quickly in that engagement, and Uyop taking down Dispenser as well, dropping Mineski down to three men, and it's still looking like a wreck esports around here, but we don't know. Mineski is able to go for the refrags there, as what we saw there, refracting down Uyop and packing immediately going for the re refrag onto retrack. Aim duels are still pretty even for both of these teams, so Rec Esports will be trying to capitalize on that factor. And now, they try to go for the numbers advantage, well, but G is just dealing so much damage already. He's going to be rotating back. I mean, Rec Esports do have the numbers advantage, but they need to get that bomb plan right here, right now, and force Mineski to go into them, or go in and try to go for the clutch, so that Rec Esports will be able to clean out this round. But for the meantime, Rec Esports haven't done that just yet. I think they don't know where the two members of Mineski are. We're not going to say, but I mean, that, that seems to be the thing here. There is no information yet for both of these teams, so the bomb's not being planted. 40 seconds after the clock, and we have to wait. That, we have to wait. That smoke is going to uh, give it away. Both players will be able to hear relatively where they're coming from. And Guy taking down Wits there, and it's just... Mm. Captain nice Hannibal on his own, but it gets taken out. 614. Rec Esports is slowly closing the gap. Mojo with the AWP shot. Good closer for Rec Esports. So now this is it. This is what I'm talking about. Being able to win against Mineski on a pistol round will let you uh, stop their momentum. They, it feels like the way to at least have the possibility of a chance to win against Mineski is to secure your pistol rounds and then you still gotta be careful but at least it makes it easier because you're not the one who has to play from behind. Exactly. And as that's happening, there's a bunch of engagement there. Gee taking down Moja and retracting down Uncle D. A bit of an aggressive play saw coming in from Mineski but Uyap quickly shuts down two men from Rec Esports. Now down to 3v3. Oh no. The opera and was dubstep. taken down. You don't give Dubstep the AWP. He almost rips away the head or the body of Wits. Punches a hole through that with that off shot, but could have been, should have been. Although, no. Retrack could be in a very cheeky spot. This could be devastating. It's a 2v1 situation. Anything can still splits. happen. Anything can still happen. True enough. Well, we're well where will Rec Esports actually push? They gotta... I mean, if... If Retrack gets this clutch, Mineski are on match point. 
and they win. How much is it? 75,000 pesos in a spot in the Southeast Asian Regionals, wherein if they win the Southeast Asian Regionals, they will have a chance to fight for 20, for the prize pool of 20 so how much million is that? Like, pesos. Like how much is that? 15 per person? Give or take, yeah. Give or take. But still, if you get into global oh, grand listen stage, to this, man. But before that, they're lining it up. Retrack, he can actually go for it. Puts out the paw flash. And Packing has to go for the plant. Does have 15 seconds left in the clock. And, and the he will be able Packing. to clutch it. But that was too close for a comfort. The possibility to spray down the mow down. And Retrack, uh, he faltered a little bit. So 7 to 14. We're still 7, 8 rounds before... 7 rounds. Yeah, seven rounds. Learn to math. Yeah, exactly. Seven rounds before <laughs> Ricky Swartz will be able to get back against Mineski. So they still have ways to go, Nomad. Yes, yeah, so we still have ways to go. You need to download the app first for that. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I uh, experienced yesterday. So hard to get a grab. But nonetheless, retract. Will they get the grabbing of kills? Yes, no. Not now. Yes, and the skill is. Not yet. Their skill cap is actually uber high right now. To the point that Wits <laughs> takes down Gi. It's now down to a 5v4 situation. And Retract gets taken out by Uyob as well. And Uncle D, they're just mowing down, down Mineski. Down. <laughs> and you can see the surge of plays coming in from Rec Esports. Exactly. <laughs> and a bit of traffic there as Dispenser catches them out. But you know, they were able to find a ways around it. True, 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 true. But, oh, wait. Do they? No way. No, no way. Hannibal can actually even try to clutch this, but never mind. Nope, Wits nope. was right there. Not today. They didn't hear the door open. They did not. I mean, I think it was at the same time as a smoke pot. Ah, okay. No, it actually, I'm pretty sure no. Because I saw the, the door open, and then the smoke was thrown, like, was a second or two seconds after. Yeah. Nah. Yeah, yeah, it happens. It happens. it happens. But nonetheless, that's still another round for Rec Esports, and they are slowly catching up. Slowly catching up is the name for the game here for Rec Esports. But they've been so hard or so pressed by Mineski to actually have like every round be their last round. And it could be. It almost is. Because Mineski right now are 14 points in. They're going to go for a Molotov. And yeah. And the clutch shots are getting fired there. It's Uyok taking down Dubstep. Down to a 5v3 situation with Wits on point with the AK taking down Hannibal again. But Gi takes down Uncle D from behind. And Wits takes down Dispenser. 3v1 situation is just Gi on his own. Make it a 2v1 situation. And this is still, at this point, anybody's game. Anybody's game. Like you said, there's going to be just so much HP for Gi. But, well... Good mindset there, good map awareness coming in from Rec Esports. They were able to 2v1 that situation. Bomb has also actually was planted before Gi died. So that should be more money here for Rec Esports. Or was it after? I think it looks it like it's before. Yeah. Yeah. So that's good. Rec Esports are starting to get some economy as well. So now, ever so slightly, ever so slowly, Rec Esports are getting it against Mineski. So I could be I could have been wrong. Wow. <laughs> How was how many was in. that? <laughs> Triple nade stack from Mineski. The airstrike didn't pay off, but you know, it's still something to gamble. But nonetheless, 5v, 5v1 situations, just dispenser on his lonesome own self. I forgot the wording. All by himself, gonna be the one to make something happen on the possible eco round for Mineski here. As he is left in a 1v5, he, he might be hearing a lot of footsteps. But he doesn't know where the bomb will be planted for now. But there you go. It's going to be on that B site. And Spencer getting the first kill on to oh, no. He gets a stab in. But Moja takes him out. But that stab is going to be an additional, but additional income for him. <laughs> I think there's going to be enough money to buy an AWP now. Because he got a headshot with a CZ-75. And a stab. And a st yeah. Make stab, stab. Stabby with stab, stab. Rec Esports slowly catching up. 10 14, just four more rounds before they tie things up. How many rounds did Rec Esports have to come back from that second one? Was that. It felt like a lot of rounds. 213. 
Yes. Wow, and they came back eight rounds here against Mineski. So maybe their CT wasn't the best, but their T is where they prepared it. Because they have brought it on the second half, but Dubstep to be able to go in and say, you know what, we also brought it. Yes, they did bring it, bring their game, but you know, Red Esports, they are still in the game here. We're not going to count them out just yet, even if they're just a man down. 4v5, a minute, 11, 10 seconds left on the clock. Still a lot of time to work around the map, try to find out where Mineski is, and try to outplay them, so to speak. So, checking out the positioning of both of these teams, it seems pretty all right. Pretty generic for the meantime. Not going to say, again, too much because they, you can't go in for Ooh. much information, but you don't want to go in and slow peak dubstep because he's just a fast flick on that AWP. You got to respect him. Yeah, respect the AWP play. Even if you're going to try to force out the, the shots there, but nonetheless, packing and Moja taking down two members off of Mineski and it's quickly just down to Uncle D on his own in a 1v2 situation. Uncle does. D taking down retrack as well. It's down to a 1v1. It all comes down to wire. No way! Oh, it's not going to be enough! No! Uh, <laughs> Peekaboo, I see you! That was disastrous for Rec Esports. Just some timing there. And match oh. point is now on Mineski. They are one win away for being the grand finalist. But nonetheless, this might be Mineski's second title and their second shot at the Southeast Asian Regionals of the Asus Republic of Gamers Masters. Here at SM North Edsa Cyber Zone. My goodness. That, that could have been the plays. That could have been the clutch from Uncle D. But, but nonetheless, just bad timing there. Put out the bomb and he wasn't aware that there was that one guy on to hut. Yeah, Moja there on, on high ground. He was like, or oh, rather, yeah, where was my opponent? Or oh, rather, where was, sorry, that was Carter. He was where was hut. my opponent? He was in the hut, not aware of it, yeah. and it's just paid, he just paid the price. Paid the price. Man, this is still going to be very clutch. At least if Rec Esports can push through, they can at least put it to overtime, which is possible in, of course, a tournament setup. But now this could be it. Well, the possibility is real. 3v3 situation, this could be it. Mineski, they have all the arsenal that they need there on the CD side as well. So Rec Esports have to be the one to push. 40 seconds left into the clock. Where will the bomb be planted? It seems that Mineski haven't found out where their opponents are just yet. And the Flames actually stopping a little bit of the push here. The rotations coming in. And the packing. Ooh, he goes for the peak. It's actually a bit of a cat and mouse game coming in from both teams. They cat both don't know game. where they are. But Captain Hannibal gets spotted by Uyop. He gets taken out, just down to retract to clutch this. If this is championship victory, he, will he be Dream able to clutch this? Is alive here for Man or rather for Rank Esports. Retract is the only one left standing. Do they know where he is? He goes in with the spray. 2v1. Can he go for it? Oh yeah, he misses it. Retract down to a 1v1 situation. It's just gonna like be packing. close here, Nomad packing in a 1v1. The bomb is ticking. Can retract find his opponent or will it be? Can it be Rank Esports to still be hanging on to the knife's edge? 10 to 15, and I think that is going to be the case. Retrack has to back off, and ladies and gentlemen, we're pushing still, or rather, Rec Esports are still pushing this one. Can we actually see again that uh, kill score? Let's see. Senor Observer. Who's been, yes, yeah, Senor Observer, or uh, Boss Direct. Boss Direct. Yeah, Pede pa KDA check. All right, we're yes. seeing it. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh we got we got the possibility no man we have the possibility right over time 11 15 they are inching closer and closer to Mineski. but nonetheless a minute 40 seconds left on the clock still pretty much doable for Mineski to get the victory but on the other hand, Rec Esports, they are showing great stride. They're, they're able to catch up to Mineski to a point where Mineski is stuck in a bad corner, where Mineski is, slow, is also fighting their way into the victory. I feel like this is the round where Mineski are feeling, or rather this part of the game is where Mineski is feeling the pressure right now. And Rec Esports, they're feeling e even more confident on trying to go against Mineski. Look at this one, though. Looking at it. All right, just, I'm just going to say this later on. I'm a minute left into the clock, and Rec Esports are making sure. They know that they have the, up, the upper hand here, but they're not going for the... Uh, the, the 
Blood please! No deaths just yet, but look at the, look at the HPs! All right, esports. <laughs> that was intense. That was tense. That could have been devastating for our EKT. Almost, almost costed them. Oh man, I'm gonna be spelling their name if they lose this one. Another almost clutch kill there for Retract, but, but the Spencer taking down backing and Gee taking down Uyop is now down to a three v five situation. What is going on? And it's just Moja on no. his own in a 1v5 situation. Will he be able to clutch this? It's very crucial. Deny Mineski any weapons in and the make words, it easier for yourself. In the words of Boslon, it's a disaster. It's a disaster. There disaster. you go. And Mineski, Mineski is your grand champion. For our Aces ROG Finals. So here we go. What do you think happened? It's something that Rex Esports had. They almost had it in the back. They were doing it well, but you know. All right, so we'll be going with our panel. So, Bill, take us away. <laughs> take us away. And so we're back in Marie and once again, congratulations to Mineski for winning the ROG Masters PH Fest for CSGO! Round of applause You're gonna there, be a representative for the Philippines of Southeast Asia, mga kaibigan. And, and syempre, to be announced pa kung kailan yan. And pare, 75,000 pesos ang panalo nila. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money that you can do anything you want. Anything you want, anything indeed. Anything you want. Alright, so, but any final thoughts para dun sa game niya? Nomad and Asurai, take it away. Rec almost had it. They... They were able to catch up mm -hmm. in, in, during Nuke, and it's something that they can do. They they have the keep as I said earlier. They have they had the capabilities. They had the capabilities. They had the win the condition. And uh, see, Nuke, because para hindi siya city favored, para hindi siya T favored, para siya Mineski favored map. Eh. You could say that as yeah. well. So it's something that in the future going forward, Rec Esports needs to learn. How about you, Asari? For me, my final thoughts were that what Rec Esports did was. Awesome, because it felt like, again, Mineski, like you said, it, it felt like a Mineski favorite map, but once Rec Esports were able to win that pistol round, they were able to start the ramp up. And it was so